guys, you saw in the last episode that despite my best efforts, we were not able to get the Warrior running before winter set in. We were still having carp issues. So now that Zippy is back into at least running condition, the weather is getting fair again, and I'm really wanting to be able to rip around in this guy. Uh, let's get her back up in the hillbilly garage. Let's mess around with the carburetor. We'll be able to try a couple of different things. Uh, I've got new brake pads and stuff to go on this guy. So let's get her up there and get back to work on Project Wounded Warrior and hopefully we'll get her running by the end of this upload. Alright guys, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to have to tear into this guy quite a bit to get to the carburetor. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, I'm probably going to... I hate to have to pull the gas tank and stuff, but that's probably going to be the easiest way to get to everything, is to pull... I think if I pull my gas tank, I'll save me from having to fight with the air box and stuff. So I think that's the plan. I'm going to have to go ahead and pull the plastics off, take the, the gas tank off. Probably the easiest way to get in there is the carburetor. So, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so I got all my plastics off, my gas tank off, We're in here to the carburetor now. I think before I take the time to pull all this out, we're going to open up a top and see where our mixture is set at. Whether it's lean or rich. Maybe play around with that a little bit first. If uh, our jets are a little too aggressive, maybe I can lean out the mixture a little bit and that'll help uh, to keep it from bogging down under throttle. So that's what we're going to do first. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but uh, this is not I, the correct intake boot for this Warrior. I did order a new one of these and it is on the way. So regardless, we are going to pull this eventually to replace that with the correct one. But uh, we're going to play around with our mixture first and see if we can't get it to run better. So we're just going to pop this top plate off. We'll pull the guts out and there'll just be a little clip in there we have to move. And that'll adjust our mixture. So pretty easy stuff. Alright guys, here's our jet needle. As you can see, this little clip right here is what determines your air fuel mixture, whether it's rich or lean. This came uh, right from the store, set a little lean. I think we're going to adjust her on the rich side here a little bit and just see how that affects how this is running. Hopefully, maybe that's all this is going to take and we'll be able to rip around in her. We'll adjust this, throw everything back together and see if we don't uh, eliminate our bogging under throttle. So all I gotta do is take this clip, move it down here a couple notches. I don't know if the GoPro is gonna focus on that, but you can see here there's several notches. Uh, closer to this end, we'll adjust it for a lean mixture. Closer down this way will be for a rich mixture, so I'm just gonna move her down, probably about to the second one from the uh, highest on the rich side. We'll see how it affects the performance. Well guys, we'll see what that does for a warrior. No carport so we don't fix it ourselves here on the fumes. I'm gonna find some place to stick my camera. Well she's 
She's not bogging at throttle anymore. I don't adjust it. Alright, so adjusting the fuel mixture a little bit rich did kind of solve the bog problems. However, I think that was making it burn a little too rich. It was starting to smoke. You could really smell it, smell the fuel. So I don't think that was a viable solution. I think that's going to cause problems in the long run as far as long longevity of the motor. So what I did was went ahead and I tore apart the old carburetor and then took the new carburetor off completely. Checked the jets between the two. And what I actually found in that which is the old carburetor actually had bigger jets than even the new performance carburetor I got. Uh, the main jet in the new one I bought was a 55, I believe, and it was a 60 in the old. And same for the pilot jet. This had a bigger pilot jet in it compared to the new one I got. So then I got to checking out the CDI box under here and came to realize that it too is in fact an aftermarket CDI. So I'm betting my money that that's actually a performance CDI as well. And instead of uh, this carburetor not giving it too much fuel, it actually wasn't giving it enough. So what I did is I took the uh, jets out of the old carburetor, the bigger ones, and put into the new carburetor. And I'm going to adjust my fuel mixture back down to uh, match what this one was at. It was The old one was right middle of the adjustment between rich and lean. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And then once my new intake boot gets here, we'll pull this guy off, put the correct one on there, and put her back together. And hopefully that'll have us right where we need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up my mess here, finish putting this back together. And then I will cut to when my new intake boot gets here. We'll get this guy back together and see if we don't... Uh, get a better running machine then. Hey, I'm back. And no, my intake boot didn't come yet, but I did realize there is one more thing I can do. Uh, I got these guys here. They came actually a long, several months ago, but I got my the rest of my little uh, pieces here for my fenders, my fender guards. That That's the wrong side, I think. But anyway, these guys came. So I'm going to go ahead and throw those guys on there while uh, we wait for that other piece to come. I think I'm doing something a little unprecedented here at Appalachian Mountain Riders. I'm actually cleaning off the spot where I'm going to put a new part in. How about that? Alright, now it's just a matter of finding the right one for the right side. Let's see, I think this is... Which way do these go? Not that way. Okay, so that's not this side. This one must be this side. But these basically have these little pegs here in the bottom that will push down into these little grommets. I think these are actually made, oh, oh, come on, get back out of there, to go in behind. So those will go in there and then get bolted through. And there is also, where are they? I know I have them. Here's one. Uh, I think it's the other side, here's the other side little support brackets here that bolt right here like so underneath I don't know if you guys can see that or not but those will go there and behind here obviously of course and then that'll act as a little support there for that as well there, look at that we got fender support Alright, now I'm just going to go over and do the same thing on the other side. So there we go guys, there's my other foot guard pieces. They're both on there, adding some uh, better stability to our fenders and hole. So now we'll cut to when my new intake boot gets here. You guys scared me, I'm supposed to be back yet. I haven't got my intake manifold. But I guess now since you're here, uh, what I'm working on is my uh, brakes. My new brake pads did come. These guys are pretty much down to nothing, which I'll show you once I pull them off. 
So, while you're here, you might as well stick around. We're going to go ahead and put some new brake pads on this guy while we wait for that exhaust manifold to come. So, I mean, your typical brake pads. This stuff is pretty easy. I don't know how well these bolts are going to come out. Well, that was easy enough. Let's see, there's one mounting bracket there. That might be seized on there pretty good. I don't know. Let's move this spacer right now before my wheel, before I lose it. Right there. Okay, where's the other guy? Back here on <coughs> the bottom. Alright, so that should be loose. Alright, now to remove the pads, these actually have uh, pad retaining bolts that actually kind of hold the brake pad in. So, what we want to do is loosen these two bolts here on the back side. Hopefully, they come out without stripping because they're Allen's. Oh no, they're just going to strip. No, 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 we don't want that. Haha. -ha. Just need a little PV blast. I'm going to go ahead and hit the other side right now. I'm going to pull up on them, pull them out. See, it's a big long pin. You see here on our brake pads, they actually have holes in them right there. And that's the pins will slide through to hold them in place. Shoo boy. So, we have run this last. Did a lot of running in it. As you can see, the brake pad is completely worn down. And instead of replacing it, they just kept running. So, our cylinder, our caliper cylinder here, is actually quite worn down. So, Definitely, definitely got a lot of neglect over the years, poor guy. Oh my. I mean, wow. Look at that. Look at how that caliper piston is. That is just unexcusable. This is just unacceptable. unacceptable. This isn't going to work. If I try to use this with the, uh, the new brake patch, they're just going to wear uneven as well and we're going to have the same problem so i think what i'm going to do is i'll check the other side see how it is i don't know maybe i can get just a rebuild kit for these calipers if that's the case no big deal but if not then i will have to get new brake calipers for this guy as small as they are they shouldn't be that expensive but uh i'm going to go ahead and check the other side here put this back in to hopefully keep some of the brake fluid from running out that I just filled. Uh, see what kind of shape it's in and once I do, well I'll check back in with you. I'll let you know if I got to replace just this one side or both sides. Well guys, good news is that although the other side the pads are still completely shot and were still rubbing, it was not enough to damage our piston and our caliper yet on this side. So it looks like I'm only gonna have to worry about getting the one side over there. So I'm gonna hit the computer, see if I can't find just a, like a caliper rebuild kit, which they might have. If not, I'll just have to get a whole new caliper for that side. But it is what it is. We'll go ahead and throw our pads in this side. We can go ahead and change our back pads. And maybe by the time that's done, our intake manifold will be here and we can throw the carburetor back on and at least see if this guy's gonna run and idle smooth now. And if you're curious here, just a quick look at how the brake pads on these work. As you can see here, they slide down in place. And then the little pins just push through the bottom two holes there. And of course, I'll put the one in on the other side there. And they'll push clear in through on that. And that holds them in place. Alright, so the back brake is very similar to the front. With the exception is we have all this extra stuff as far as our parking brake, lever, and all that. But there's still two bolts here that... We'll come loose one here on the bottom one on the top and take them out and we should just be able to slide this out now by the looks of it we do actually have a little pad left on our back but they are almost done as well so we'll go ahead and replace those oh yeah and then this is the same as the front as far as having these two little nuts here we're going to pull out for the retainer pins that are in there holding that in place and then we'll just swap our pads. But as you guys might be able to see, not sure if you can or not, we do have a little pad left on there, which is a good sign. 
All right, guys, rear brakes are all done. New pads are in, everything's back together. And I'll probably end up having to work on my uh, parking brake adjustment here, but I'll worry about that once I get this guy running. I did get a new front caliper ordered. And I probably should have checked first because I could have replaced the calipers with uh, brake pads for the same price I got just brake pads, but oh well. The uh, new caliper is coming. It is with brake pads. Once it gets here, we'll throw that in. In the meantime, my new intake manifold did come. So as you can see, here is what is supposed to be on it. It is a one piece that will bolt to this and then bolt to the head. Uh, compared to this uh, rigged up contraption here that really wasn't correct. You can see they took the grinder. I think I showed you that guys when we tore into it in the first place. So we're going to go ahead and bolt the intake manifold to the carburetor. And bolt this guy up on there. Get that hooked back up while I wait for a caliper to come. And then I did end up getting a new chain as well because I got to looking. I doubt it's dark. You'll be able to see this too well. But this chain is like up. Just I think it's like right there. It has a kink where the chain goes nice and straight. And it's like wonk for a little bit. And then it's straight again. Uh... You can maybe kind of see how it's a little wonky right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, we're going to replace the chain while we're at it. And that is a much nicer fit. Plus, you can kind of tell that the end of our intake manifold here is angled. So it actually fits proper. And this guy really wasn't. So it's kind of a pain getting it lined up in there. But we should be good now with the proper intake manifold. So let's go ahead and get this guy bolted on there. We'll hook up our throttle cable, get all our fuel lines, our fuel tank back on. And hopefully with these jets out of the old carburetor that ran good with how this is set up, this guy will now run good. Otherwise, we'll be back to square one and have to fiddle with some more things. But we'll tackle that when we get there. It's always interesting to buy an old used machine like this because you never really know what you're going to get into until you get into it. Makes things interesting and it's always a learning experience to say the least. Alright guys, so I got the carburetor back in, I got all my plastics back on, my gas tank back on, seats back on, and uh, full disclosure guys, I really couldn't wait to see if this guy would run, so I've already started it, I already know she's going to fire, she's going to run, she's idling nice now, but uh, to prove it to you guys, I'll go ahead and fire up here, she's already warmed up here from uh, checking my idle adjuster and stuff, getting that all dialed in, but uh, I'll go ahead and start her here for you guys, so you can hear her run. Alright guys, so as you saw... The Warrior fired right up. I have not got to take it for a ride yet. It's getting a little dark here now. It's evening. I actually had to move it out of the hillbilly garage because I got another project quad in there we're going to be working on here in a little bit. But I'm not going to reveal much of that yet. But anyway, she's down here. So I did run it as far as to get it down here. But I did not get to actually take it for a big ride yet to see how she's running now. We know she's starting, she knows she's idling, but how does she run at other throttle levels? That's what we got to find out. Now that it has the bigger jets in it, I'm a little worried it might uh, be still too aggressive for this to run good over half throttle. And we may end up having to stick the smaller main jet back in, but that's what this ride's for, to figure out how she's going to run. So, get my helmet on here, which is absolutely filthy from majestic trails i still have yet to wash it off which i probably should do that here before long but anyway let's uh get this guy warmed up and take her for a quick rip all right where's my choke lever Bert, there it is choke on key on bunny scared and hopping Just my idle up just a little bit. There we go. That sounds better. Alright. Well, oh, that'll die on me. Reverse. Ooh, that's a tight fit. Reverse lever. 
in my puddles. It's too cold to get something wet out here. now just because oh yeah i am still waiting for my caliper to come in you guys know that we just ordered that i just zip tied it up out of the way there for time being so i can take it for a quick little trip uh yeah i got my new chain on too i can't remember if i told you guys that or not New chain is in. She's good. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this or not to you guys. Here, hold on, let me kill this. So you guys can actually hear me. Someone did say about the stock air boxes on these are very, very, very restrictive. And so I can do the Swiss cheese trick where I just drill a bunch of holes and get a little more airflow. And I might be fine with that uh, bigger jet in there. Again, that's the jet that was in the old carburetor that was in this guy when I got it, and it ran fine. So I don't know why the bigger jets would be screwing it up now, but there's something going on there that I am going to have to do a little research on and see if I can't figure out what is going on. But we are making progress here at this guy. I think we just about got it dialed in. I'm getting to the point now here where in order to rip, I'm going to have to get some new tires for this guy because they are ones that are on here are getting pretty shot. So, yep, there she is. Project Wounded Warrior is uh, coming back to life pretty well. A couple other little things here to do to get her in running condition. And then I'll have to see what my plans are for the future. I want to probably do a little more performance upgrades with her if I get her running a little smoothly here. We're definitely going to put an aftermarket exhaust on here. I mean, this guy is loud now, but it's just a stock muffler that's been punched out. And again, you guys remember from the tear down, there's this hack job up here of this weld, uh, which still scares me that I might not get that pipe off. We'll tackle that when we get there. I can't remember if I took that off when I tore it down or not. I may not have messed with it. I may have. I can't remember because that's been like, what, three or four months ago. That's a long time to remember stuff when you've got so many projects going on here at the same time. <laughs> five different projects all going at the same time none of them ever get finished but hey that's how it goes you ask my wife about the uh, projects we have going on in the house and it's the same way anyway we are so close to getting this guy back up and running where we want to have her so we can really rip i'm hoping here by the mines and meadows meet and greet here in a couple weeks i'll have this guy running good enough i can maybe take it along and do a bit of riding on it as well but we'll just have to see when that gets here 
Whew, there, lose the helmet. Now I can talk to you guys without feeling like I have to scream. And you can see my dazzling profile. So I hope you guys enjoy these project videos like this warrior, like on uh, Little Zippy. I enjoy working on this stuff and I enjoy making the videos and sharing it with you. So if you like these kind of projects, let me know in the comments below and we're going to just keep cracking them out one after another. Again, I had to take a pause here midday to go get another project quad I'm going to work on. Uh, not one I bought, but for a guy I work with, he actually has a four-wheeler that's not running. So we're going to see if we can't get that fixed and going for him. But it should bring some nice, entertaining, and informative videos for you guys to watch as well. So again, don't forget to like before you leave. Subscribe if you're new to my channel and this is the first time joining me. Hit that little notification down there. And don't forget, your support is highly appreciated, whether it's through my Teespring store, which you can get to by clicking up here. Supporting me on Patreon, which gets you access to exclusive content or simply watching my videos liking them and commenting below all your support is highly appreciated and it helps to ensure that i can continue doing projects like wounded warrior here in the future for your guys's entertainment i'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your evening or day whatever time it is whenever you're watching this video and until next time keep on riding Get that figured out. 